Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, ich schreibe Ihnen diesen Brief im Haus meiner Eltern. Dear Mr. President, I'm writing this letter to you from my parents' house, from the house in which they were murdered. Next to the table from where I write these lines, my father's chair, the chair in which they sat him facing Mecca and in the 70th year of his life repeatedly stabbed him and tore out his heart, a pure heart that always loved Iran and the people of Iran. His blood has now dried on the carpet and the stains have paled. The echo of the screams of pain my parents cried out still filled the entire house and resound again in my own sorrowful heart. Yours sincerely, Parastu Fruhar. a country torn apart. Tradition and a new beginning. Religion and politics. Totalitarian oppression and the rallying cry of freedom and human rights. The various factions in this authoritarian, theocratic country are confronting one another with uncharacteristic openness. And this is the latest beacon of hope, Mohammed Hatami. Like an Islamic Gorbachev, many hope he might be able to democratize the system and break the conservative mullahs hold on power. Surprisingly, he has just been elected president of the government by 70% of the population. In this time of optimism and hope, we visited two legendary opposition leaders in Iran, Dariush and Pavane Fruya. They openly criticized the authority of the mullahs, just as they fought 30 years ago against the dictatorship of Reza Pahlavi with his notorious secret police, the Sabak. The political ideal, Mohammad Mossadegh, who as Prime Minister in the 50s, nationalized the Iranian oil industry and was then toppled from power with the help of the CIA. Next to his portrait, pictures of their grandchildren who live in Germany, with daughter Parastu, a successful artist, and son Arash. I love Germany because all the children are there. They hadn't called us yet on that weekend. It was Sunday afternoon and I was still expecting the phone to ring. Mm. 
زندگیش یک نظمی داشت دوچاری چین بی... این بی نظمی ها را بر نمیتابید من چون خیلی با آقای فروهر نزدیک بودم نگران شدم گفتم به یکی از اون جوان هایی که اونجا بود برو در رو باز کن ببینیم کیست چه خبر داخل اون جوان از دیوار بالا آمد در بزلندی هم داره اینجا آمد در رو باز کرد دیگه غروب شده بود دیگه تقریبا اون چه آقا توی حیات رو روشن کرد I started trying to call Iran my parents house I tried several times nobody answered the phone I sent a fax no answer من به اتفاق اون افرادی که اونجا بودن آمدیم به داخل و وقتی داخل ساختمان شدم آقای فروهر روی این صندلی در حالی که سینش خونالود بود افتاد بود و سر به عقب بعد من از دوستان پرسیدم که پروانه کجاست چند نفر رفتم به طبقه بالا آمدن گفتن پروانه را هم کشتند پروانه در روی زمین افتاد بود Dann habe ich einen enge Freund von den beiden in Paris angerufen. Then I called a friend of the couple in Paris. When he answered the telephone, he was crying. Ich habe gefragt, was was ist da? I said, what's wrong? He told me they'd been attacked, and I asked, what happened? At first I was only thinking of my father because he was the one who was always more I always saw the danger to him and not to my mother. I asked whether my father was in the hospital and he said it's over. And then I asked is my father dead and he said it's not just your father. And that's when I knew my parents had been murdered. Er meinte es nicht nur dein Vater und da wusste ich, dass meine Eltern ermordet worden sind. The Puhars had not always been in conflict with the Islamic rulers. When the people revolted against the Shah, the battle experienced boss of the party of the Iranian people was one of the leading spokesmen and organizers of the broad alliance opposing the dictatorship. <laughs> The martyrs of Maidane Jale had ignited a signal fire. Every attempt by the emperor, who was supported by the United States and other Western countries to quell the uprising through bloodshed, only made things worse. The blood of those killed was the clearest proof of the regime's cruelty and of the righteousness of the rebellion. In the Shiite universe in which many Iranians live, all those who were killed were considered to be disciples of Hussein, a grandson of Muhammad, who in the old days was deceitfully murdered near Kabbalah and robbed of his political birthright as a descendant of the Prophet. 